We covered constants in the first section of this course. I will leave the link to that video in the description, so check it out if you want to. You could also have constants defined per class, and that is what we'll be covering in this video along with the scope resolution operator. As you know, constants are immutable, meaning that you cannot change the value once it's defined. We define constants similar to properties, but we follow standard to keep all constant names uppercase and use underscores as the separator. So for example, if I go to the transaction class from the previous lesson, let's define some constants to this class. A transaction can have status, right? Transaction can be in paid status, or it could be in pending status, or it could be in declined status, etc. So let's create some of those. So to create constants, we use the const keyword followed by the constant name. And for the constant name, we follow the standards and keep them in all uppercase. And we use underscores as separators. So we'll call it status paid. And for the value, we can either set it to integer or to string, depending on how you want to store and keep these statuses. In this case, I'm just going to use all lowercase values. So I'm just going to say paid for this. And then we can duplicate this and say status pending and set this to pending. And we said status declined. You could also assign access modifiers or visibility to the class constant. If you don't, by default, they will be set to public. But I encourage and recommend to always define the visibility, even if it's public. So in this case, I'm going to set them to public. So now that we have defined constants, how can we actually access them? As you remember when we defined non-class constants, we were able to access them by simply referring or using the constant name. But to access the class constants, we need to access them using the class name. So if we go to index.php, and let me comment this out for now, we could use the class name, which is transaction. And then we use double colons, which is called the scope resolution operator, and then the constant name. So we could do status paid, and let's echo that out. And if we refresh the page, we see paid is printed. Class constants are allocated one per class and not per instance, which means that we don't need to have the instance of the class to access the class constants. Now, in addition to accessing constants on the class level, you could actually access them on the object level as well. So if I bring this back here where I have the transaction instance, instead of doing transaction, I could actually access it on the variable this way, and this will still work. So if I refresh, it will still print paid. If you set the class constant to private, you will no longer be able to access that constant outside of the class. The same way you wouldn't be able to access the class properties. So let's change this to private. And if I refresh the page, we get the fatal error. However, you could access them within the class. And to access constants within the class, you need to use the class name, which is one way of doing it. So let's var dump and let's comment this out for now let's refresh the page we get paid and another way to access it is by using the self keyword and self refers to the current class so it's similar to the this variable which refers to the calling object but self refers to the current class or the class where it's called there are more differences between self and this and we'll talk about that in the next video once we get to the statics but if i refresh the page it still prints paid a class also has a magic constant called class which resolves at compile time and returns a fully qualified class name. So for example, in here, we could do a transaction, then use the scope resolution operator and then use class. And if we refresh the page, it prints the fully qualified class name. Now this can work on objects and it can also work on the class itself. So we could do it this way and it will still print fully qualified class name. There are many use cases for constants. If you have data or information that does not change and keep referencing all over the code, it's better to move it into a class constant so that way if it ever changes you only change it in one place another use case is to define constants as sort of enumerations or enums the same way i just did it for transaction it allows you to not hard code these values if you notice that you're hard coding some piece of data that does not change that often, consider replacing them with constants. And I'll show you an example. Let's create a method here called set status, and it will accept a string status, and it will set the property status. And let's simply return this. Let's set the return type to self. And as you remember previously, when we set the return type to the current class, we use the class name. So like this transaction, but you could also use the keyword self, which refers to the current class. So it would still work. Now we need to create the status property, right? So let's do private string status and let's set the default status to pending. And let me comment these out for now so that I can show you both with and without constants. Now you could set the default status straight in here as well, this way, pending, or you could set it in a constructor. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Now let's say transaction set status and let's set it to paid. 
now let's var dump transaction and we see that transaction status is set to paid right it's a private property and the value it's set to is paid now this is all good and it's working but imagine doing this all over your code you're essentially hard coding these and you might make a typo and pass something like this and it will still work right and even though this does not cause any errors you might introduce some bugs somewhere else in your code also you could pass any invalid status and it will still work right and again this could introduce bugs in another part of your code this is where constants can help you if we go back here we have these constants right so instead of hard coding this data we could simply set self status pending and on index we could pass transaction paid now if we refresh everything still works and we have solved one problem the problem we solved is with the typos now we are passing the constant so we know that we're not going to make typos however we could still pass any invalid status here and this still works to solve this second case we could simply introduce some kind of validation on the set status method so in here we could say if status is paid or status is pending or status is declined then everything is good otherwise maybe throw an exception or throw some kind of error but this would be a bunch of conditionals here right and as you would add more constants and more statuses you would need to modify this method instead of this we could simply introduce another constant here called all statuses and set this to an array the keys can be the actual statuses so we could do self status paid and you could actually introduce some kind of friendly name to this status because you already have these values available as keys and for the values of this array you could give it a friendly name that you could later use to display to the user so in here we can say paid with the first letter capital then we could do pending and then we could do declined this way this is also something called a lookup table and we'll talk about lookup tables later in the course and now in the set status method we could simply check if the given status exists in the all statuses array and if it does not exist we can then maybe throw some kind of exception or an error and we'll cover the exceptions later in the course so don't worry about it now just bear with me here now if we refresh the page we're going to get this error that this transaction does not exist now we can go back here and fix this and pass the proper transaction all right so we've solved both problems but there is still one thing that bothers me we're kind of coupling these constants with the transaction class right transaction class should be responsible for processing and working with transactions i don't think it should be responsible for storing status constants it does not make sense to refer to transaction class outside of the object to access the constants imagine we had to access this constant somewhere else where transaction object wasn't needed maybe for display referencing a class that has other business logic in it just to get the constant values would not look good to me so what can we do notice how we are prepending our constants with the word status that's a pretty good indicator that we could extract these constants into its own class because right now we're prefixing all statuses with the status word but i think something like status paid would look much cleaner and more expressive so let's create this class within app directory and we can store this in app enums namespace and we could actually create that folder and it would be within app enums directory so let's add that and now we could move these four to here and we could get rid of the status prefix now we can go to transaction and instead of self we could reference the constant using status so we could do pending and change that to status and now if i refresh the page everything still works but this looks a lot more readable looks more expressive and we are not coupling our status data with the transaction class also something i want to let you know is that php will be adding native support to enum type so you could create enum classes so you wouldn't need to create a class like this where you set constants you would be able to create an enum class i will leave the link to the rfc in the description and you could check it out if you're interested but it's going to be a pretty cool feature that will be added in php 8.1 this is it for this video thank you so much for watching please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this lesson and i'll see you next time where we'll cover static properties and methods